Death and the King's Horseman was performed at the National Theatre in Lagos. We saw a bit of that on one of the editions of At House, but what we did not see was the exhibition that took place on the sidelines. Take a look. My honor you have taken already. It is locked up in that desk of yours in which you will put away your report of this night's events. And even the honor of my people, you are taken already. It is locked, it is tied with those papers of treachery which make you masters in this land. I was trying to make this easy. But you had to go on and bring in politics. <coughs> Mark to lose a heart. Madam, you must remain along this line. <laughs> And go no further to this cell door. No! Yes, sir! If she goes beyond this point, close go. Yes, sir! Yes, yes sir! sir. Let's begin by refreshing your memory with the performance that took place to commemorate 30 years of Professor Wally Shoinka winning the Nobel Prize for Literature, Death and the King's Horseman. It's one of the hardest plays to direct, actually, because the language is redeeming, you understand? And the, the play, first and foremost, is classical literature. So sometimes when you want to put it on stage, you know, it's a great challenge, but it's been fulfilling. drama of course from different director perceptive like four for seven times right now so seeing this from another director yeah another interpretation for a director uh, I think I, I like the angle he has taken to again present to us a Wallace Inca play and when I say Wallace Inca play which we all know that it can be very kind of very very difficult to understand to be able to like you know comprehend but to have somebody interpret it the way he has been able to interpret to the understanding of uh, you know a whole lot of people because he brought it really down for even students, secondary school students, since they read it now in school, for them to understand. I, I, I think he's done a good job to really break it down for us to understand a Walesho Inca. And while the performance was going on, an exhibition of some works from his personal collection is taking place. Images of his childhood, from primary to university, to the people and influences that have shaped him while growing up. During his years in England, he worked at the Royal Court Theatre in London. It's a celebration of the 40th you know, anniversary of the play, of when he wrote the book, and of course that means presenting an history of the, the playwright. So all of this painting I've just told us, we have walked through, if you saw it from the beginning, we walked through the beginning of a Wale Shainka, uh, 40 years journey in a way. So it's a good thing for us to see this, to see his journey in pictures, and then we'll see the play, you know, which kind of like complete the story of, you know, the man Shainka. But beyond his formative years, there's a rare moment where you see the many sides of this color like his belief in culture and tradition, as seen in this picture of a carved calabash which has intriguing designs, symbolizing the world. The top part shows where the spirits live, then the lower part represents where the humans and animals stay. 
and how culture has deeply influenced his artistic side with his surgeon abroad. Roots were always important and it's reflected in all his works. That's why there's a grind that goes on behind the scenes when his books breathe life, especially when he's there to see it blows them. It's something I think should be encouraged, should be either sponsors, corporate sponsors or whatever, should put in, I think they should encourage putting more funds because then the exhibition can become a larger one, much more comprehensive, maybe installed in more interesting spaces and could make it a traveling exhibition so that much more people can see it. So. We see the many productions the professor has been involved in, from King Babu in 2001 to Oedipus at Colonus. The making of his movies, such as The Blues of a Prodigal Son, shot in 1982, and Kongi's Harvest, shot in 1970. A passionate actor, as seen in The Good Woman of Sezuan, where he plays the role of Sun the pilot and also plays Kongi in Kongi's Harvest. All his efforts were rewarded when he won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1986. Call it the icing on the cake. What had been established over 40 years ago that Professor Shoenka wrote this play has also garnered the recognition that brought the Nobel Award to Africa for the first time 30 years ago. As a scholar of international repute, he has been privileged to meet many world leaders. Some of them are no longer with us. He also has memories of his productions that have been done by the national troupe, especially about his play, Death and the King's Horsemen. I've seen several productions of, of Death and the King's Horsemen. I've also seen the Yoruba translation, the Koyla Shoba, um, also in the theatre here. That was almost uh, 20 years ago. Um, I think it was a very commendable performance. I think within whatever constraints and challenges you have in an environment like this, I think they've put up something which is very much recommended to the general public to come and watch. And I think, I think they put up a splendid, a splendid show. Then there are more in the kitty of the Nobel laureate. Professor Wally Shoinka, because he started collecting them at a young age, showing that his love for art is unlimited. Born in Bumundi in Bayelsa State, South South Nigeria in 1921, Gabriel Okara had his early education at the Government College in Mwahia, Abia State, and later at the Yaba College in Lagos. He studied journalism at Northwestern University in 1949. In most of his writing, he is always concerned with promoting and celebrating the African culture, which he feels is being eroded, as seen in his poem, Once Upon a Time. His most famous poems are Piano and Drums and You Laughed and Laughed and Laughed. Beyond poetry and fiction, Okara has also written plays and features for broadcasting, although many of his manuscripts were destroyed during the Nigerian Civil War. He won the Commonwealth Prize for Poetry. You can enjoy Art House on any of these platforms. We're gradually getting to the home stretch, but before we go, let's take a look at what to expect when you tune in next week. Yinka Shonibare's wind sculpture exhibition at the Undubisi Kanu Park in Lagos. It's his first solo show in Nigeria. Where are we from? What's our culture? You know, how did we develop our culture? Why did we start using Ankara? Why are we wearing it? Where did it come from? It's about trying to develop a new, modern African art. To these performances, which is set to speak against child abuse. 
As we age into 2017, let's know the great things you'd like to see on Art House. Thank you so much for making 2016 a memorable one as we look forward to seeing more amazing things in the new year, especially in the world of the arts. I'm Melinda Akinami, wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you.